Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. In this video, I would like to continue with uh, breaking down some of the complexities that are part of the c -sharp script component. And in the previous videos, we saw how if we extend all these regions that are by default hidden, then we can see the internal utility functions or the methods that are available, like printing or reflecting on objects. And we can also see the members that c -sharp script components give us to access things in the ecosystem of Rhino and Grasshopper. Like for example, instances to the Rhino document, the Grasshopper document, and the particular component that is running this script. We've seen that in previous videos. We also know that we can write code here and that we have been doing throughout the series. But I would like to focus today on a particular area that we have not yet seen. And that's not going to be the top one with the using and how to import libraries. We will see that in a couple of videos down the road. But I'd like to focus today on this area here, the custom additional code, because this area is an area where we can write additional code that we can use to extend the functionality of this particular component. If you are familiar with C Sharp, uh, we already broke down how c -sharp script components are basically instances of a class that inherits from um, some Grasshopper class that is available out there and has a lot of functionality, but we basically subclass it. And that's why it has its own methods, its own members, and this one particular function that Grasshopper knows it has to execute for each component. But at the end of the day, this is just a class. And because it is a class, we can extend the members, the methods, and a lot of functionality of this class by just adding more stuff beyond the simple run script function that we use as default for writing code. And that extension happens here in this area. This is an area where I can actually write additional code, all right? And we typically use this area for a few things that we can add to extend the functionality of a script component. One very simple way of extending that functionality is by adding additional methods, so additional functions that help us do operations that perhaps we repeat over and over again. So for example, I have here right now, I have a component where I put x, y, z as double inputs, and these are numbers, and I hope to use this component to create a vector uh, out of these x, y, z coordinates and to output the length of this vector. There's actually a component just like this in vanilla grasshopper. So we already know that, for example, I can declare a variable here, vector 3D, and I can call it lowercase v, and I can call it vec, and that's going to be a new instance of a vector object with coordinates x, y, and z. Okay? And I can output, so I typically, sorry, I do algorithm, and let's, uh, and I do output, so I can output that throughout the component, and you can see that now I have my vector out here as an output. And we already know as well that for length, vec the vector class has a property that is called length that I could use to just calculate this length right away, okay? But let's imagine that we didn't have this for whatever reason. Let's imagine that we needed to make our own calculations for a, the length of a vector. So how would that work? Well, if I have the vector, so we know that we can do an operation where we can say the length of the vector is going to be the square root of vector.x, so the x coordinate square, right, plus the y coordinate square. So that's going to be vec.y. So we're using, we're doing Pythagoras here. And we have a bunch of videos in the channel that explain why this is the case. Okay. And sorry, this is not a plus. This is a multiplication. Okay. So the length of this vector is the square root of each one of its components squared. Now, if this is, imagine that this is a very common operation that we want to do. We probably want to abstract this into a function. So where would I write that function? That function, I cannot write it right here because in C-sharp, you cannot write functions inside other functions. However, in the custom additional code is, is this area that I can use to write my own functions 
that I could reuse over and over again. So what I could do here is I could say, I'm going to create a function that returns a double because I want to return the length and I'm going to call this vector length. All right. And this, this function is going to take one argument, which is going to be one element uh, called V, for example, that is going to be the vector. All right. And then what I can do is I can take this and I can just paste it here. Sorry. And then this should be V and V and V and V and V. Now that lives inside of here. And the return is going to be that value. What I can do that with that is that I can now say, well, I can now say that the output length is going to be equal to the result of this function that I just created, vector length, on the vector that I created up here. And if I run this code, you can see that nothing changes because the result is the exact same one. What's beautiful about this is that vector length is an operation that is available in Rhino Common, whatever. But if I didn't have this operation, if I wanted to create my own function that I needed to reuse over and over again, then I have just written here a reusable function that can be used throughout my maybe very complex algorithm here in my C sharp script component. Okay. Also, technically, what we know is that because all of this is a class, because this whole thing is a class, what we just did is that we created, we added our own custom method to the class so that it could be used by other functions inside of this class. All right. So that is technically what we just did. Um, so yeah, so we can add functions to the custom additional code in case we need to reuse them over and over again. But there is another thing that we can add. Another thing that I can add to in to my script instance classes. And here in the additional code is that I can actually write my own classes that I could reuse throughout the life of a, a script instance. So remember, C sharp is a object oriented programming language. And very often when we work with a lot of data and with complexity, it's just easy and nice to encapsulate things in classes and in objects because it makes managing things much easier. So for example, I can do that by creating classes that live inside the script instance class. So for example, I have a, I created a new script component that is taking a string called name and it's taking an integer called age. And what I'm going to do here and it's coming to I'm going to output a class of the type person. So for example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a class that I'm going to call person. All right. And uh, I'm going to give it a couple of properties. So I'm, it's going to have a public property called name. And I'm going to have a public property integer called the age and then the constructor is going to take those as inputs. So string name, string age, and then it's going to save them as as part of the, um, the properties. Okay. And um, it may have, for example, it can have a, a function called say hi. So for example, it can return a string, say hi. And then when we call this, then it returns a string that is something like, hello, my name is name, sorry, this dot name. And um, for example, and I am this dot age years old, for example. So that could be a function. All right. And, um, and we could also overwrite, for example, the, the, uh, the two string method to just return, um, uh, th this, this dot name plus, uh, this dot H. Okay. For example, so this is a class that I just created that represents a very simple thing, just a person with a name and an age. Okay. What that means is that given now these inputs, 
I can, in my main code, I can instantiate a new instance of a variable of the type person. So for example, that's going to be Jose Luis, all right? Which is going to be a new person, which I think I need to make this public. Yes, a new person of the with a name and the age, all right? And I can output that over my output here. And if I run this, you can see that um, well, I'm, let me cancel this out for a second. <laughs> um, let me cancel this out for a second, and then we will fix that. And then here, I'm going to write here Jose Luis. And I'm going to write here my age, which is 100 years old. All right. So I have this, and I have an error. There's not going to that the takes two arguments. It Oh, yeah, because I need to make this public as well. And I need to make all of these public so that they are accessible. And then I run this. And then, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so I have a typo here. This should be a an integer. Okay, beautiful. And then if I put this in here, so you can see that the default is that I have um, is that I have a is that I have a person object that is coming out. But the printout of that is this weird thing, which is this is a person class that is living inside of a script instance class. That's why I wanted to overwrite the string method. So let's see. But exactly. So if we override the string method, then Grasshopper and C Sharp will know that in order to turn this object into a string, they need to change that. Uh, they need to use this default method. Okay. If you want to learn more about how to write classes, we have a video also on my learning C Sharp playlist. And if you want to learn more specifically about the two string method, I believe I also have a video about that. So those videos should be popping as cards here on the corner, or they should probably be in the description of this video at some point. Okay. And uh, so yes, so now Jose Luis, is 100 years old, we can change his name, etc. Okay, so if for some reason, I was writing a component that was using lots and lots of instances of persons, then this would make sense. All right, this would be a super, super helpful thing to do. However, um, the only drawback is that let's say that I wanted to create now a new C sharp script component that is going to take a person. All right, Let's me let me show you the problem here. Let me say I'm going to save this. Okay, this is going to work. And then this is going to be of the type system object because grasshopper doesn't have a an, a person class because it just created this custom. So I'm going to take a generic object. And then I will try to cast it and then the outputs are going to be the name and the age. So let's see. Let's imagine that I wanted to write some code that would take a person class and then a, a person object and then would spit out the name and the age of that object. Okay, so we might be tempted to think that, oh, well, since I have the class person in the first component, I can just copy this. And then I can now paste it here. And it's the same class, right? So now what I can do is I can say, I go, I can declare a person of a person object called person and that's going to be casting the input P into a person class. And then for name, I'm going to take person dot name. And then for the H output, I'm going to take person dot H. All right. So I would be inclined to believe that this could work. And this actually kind of makes sense. But if I do that, turns out that this doesn't work. And the reason why this doesn't work is that Grasshopper cannot convert this person object, the one that is coming from my previous component, to an object of this class. It just cannot. This conversion is not valid. But wait, how does that make sense? I mean, it's the exact same code. I just copy pasted it from the other component. So why can they not change? Can, why can they not <coughs> convert from one to the other? 
Well, it turns out that because this class was defined in two different components, even though the code and the text and all the details are the exact same thing, because they were defined in two separate instances of classes, then internally, they have different signatures, they have different memory addresses, and to the computer's eyes, they are different because they were created in different places and they cannot be matched together. This might be counterintuitive for us because, again, the, the text, the written code is the exact same thing, but because they were created in separate places and with separate um, codes and they have different memory allocations and different signatures, to, to the computer, they just look different. So, um, so what we need to do then is that in order to do this, there are ways to go around this. And we will see in future videos that something that we can do is we can declare this class in a separate file. So we can create a class that only we can create a file that contains only this class and we can load that file in different grasshopper components. And as we do that, we would be able then to, um, to, to use the same code that has been generated in the same place into different components. The last thing that I would like to talk about is another thing that we can add in the custom code section, which is that we can actually add variables here. So for example, just like I created a method, I could have here uh, a variable uh, that is called, for example, I don't know, let me call this Boolean, I don't know, uh, is Jose, uh, <laughs> I don't know, have you had coffee, <laughs> for example, and we can turn this to true, right? And then if we do that, then it turns out that this variable will be available, not just to the functions that live here, but it will also be available here in the main code. So for example, if I close this and uh, I write here a new variable, caffeinated, okay, and then I spit this out here and then as a panel, then something that I can do is I can add to the outputs here caffeinated, I can add here the value of this variable that has been hard coded here in the code. So if I write this, now this is true. And if I change this, so now this is false. Why is this interesting? Well, that's actually something that I would like to further unpack because this being able to declare variables outside of the main run script function is actually extremely, extremely helpful for doing other things such as, for example, having persistent data that lives in the Grasshopper component and it doesn't change or it doesn't get removed whenever we re-execute the component. And that is going to be super interesting for things such as creating dynamic simulations or giving the impression that the Grasshopper script has a life cycle of its own. Okay, but that I'm actually going to focus on the next video. So join me on the next video as I talk specifically about the idea of using variables here for having persistent data and therefore creating continuous execution of sorts inside of Grasshopper. Okay, so I'm going to cover that on the next video. In the meantime, if you like this video, maybe like the video, subscribe to the channel, say hi, join Discord, etc, etc. Okay, thanks a lot. See you on the next video. Bye.